The Hemiuretic Kingdom has a vast tradition that links its royalty to the world of the supernatural. According to folklore, the 6th century Hemiarite king Saif ben Di Yazan led a full-scale battle between his army and a species of jinn called the Adharid. These were shape-shifting ghouls made from flesh and blood and were very different from the regular jinn who are normally invisible and made from fire. The Adharid normally looks like a wolf but it can change its shape into that of a dog, cat or any other animal or even a man or woman. Could these creatures be responsible for the strange sightings and disappearances that have occurred near Barhutwell in modern times? From sightings of abnormally large carnivorous winged creatures to unexplained disappearances. In September 2021, 10 explorers from the Omani Caves exploration team traveled to the neighboring country of Yemen to find the truth behind its legendary Barhut whale. For centuries, it has been known by locals as both a geological and supernatural anomaly, serving as an interdimensional station separating our reality from the world of the jinn. Between the Hadramut and Al Mahra governorates, there have been countless stories across the area going back thousands of years concerning strange deaths, abnormally large birds, and even an Elrich type Lovecraftian anomaly with roots going back to early Islam and Judaism. Up until this time, the whale's infamy was primarily only known to regional locals and some long-time followers of the mysterious Middle East. However, along with the Omani team's expedition, came global media attention as the world wanted to know more about one of the few remaining locations on the planet that had yet to be explored. What did the Omanis discover? And could there be way more to the story of Barhut whale than what the media is reporting? As the terrorized home to the Ark of the Covenant and the legendary Queen of Sheba, Yemen is literally one of the most mythical and beautiful locations in the world. Before the 2021 expedition, the Barhut well was famous for giving the impression of being a bottomless pit, where the light of the sun itself cannot penetrate. Till this day, the area has long been home to a steady stream of anomalous activity ranging from cryptid attacks to strange disappearances, with both of these mysteries often being linked to the well. How much can be attributed to an ever-evolving folklore and how much is genuine is unclear. But as we will show, these stories go back centuries. One famous story from the modern era concerns a shepherd who left her baby in the vicinity of the well, only for it to vanish in a blink of an eye with the child unable to crawl to the edge without first being spotted by its mother. This disappearance has remained unexplained. Other disappearances could be attributed to carelessness, where individuals may have simply fallen to their deaths. Although there have been accounts from the medieval period stating that one villager was attacked by an extremely large winged creature that originated from the well. This story is consistent with more modern-day sightings of several species of large birds occasionally seen emerging from the well that are unknown to the local scientific community. However, none of these flying cryptids have been described as being so large that they can match the description of the earlier encounter. One of the most famous accounts concerning strange animal attacks 
came during a time when Yemen was enduring a terrible drought. Desperate villagers had tied a rope around the man and slowly lowered him into the well to find water. However, before he had reached the bottom, he screamed to be brought back to the surface. When the villagers had retrieved him, he had already been eviscerated, with the bottom half of his body missing. In Yemeni folklore, legend says that a team of jinn were instructed by one of the jinn kings, a powerful elemental class of jinn to build the well, for the purpose of capturing and imprisoning evil demons there. Another tradition can be traced back to the Himyarite era, where it was a human king who held influence over the jinn. The Himyarite kingdom was a pre-Islamic civilization. According to lore, one of its ancient Arab kings used the jinn to dig this well in order to hide his treasures. And when he died, his followers from the jinn settled here. And it is for this reason it was called Berhut as the name Barhut in the ancient Hemiarratic language means the land of the jinn or the city of the jinn. The Hemiarratic kingdom has a vast tradition that links its royalty to the world of the supernatural. According to folklore, the 6th century Hemiarrite king Saif ben Di Yazan led a full-scale battle between his army and a species of jinn called the Adharid. These were shape-shifting ghouls, made from flesh and blood, and were very different from the regular jinn, who are normally invisible and made from fire. The Adharid normally looks like a wolf, but it can change its shape into that of a dog, cat, or any other animal, or even a man or woman. Could these creatures be responsible for the strange sightings and disappearances that have occurred near Barhutwell in modern times. According to Yemeni folklore, the Adharid is attracted by the blood of the dead and is known to appear at the scene of a murder. It will suddenly materialize before a person, bark or growl at him, and then vanish. Historians say these creatures were a corruption of the Greek lycanthropos, or werewolves while folklore says that their home till this day rests in this part of Hadramut. Prior to the 2021 expedition to the area, several other documented attempts were made to explore the Barhut well, one of which we covered in detail in an earlier episode concerning three researchers from the nearby Hadramut University were conducting a preliminary survey of the site for National Geographic. Here, the lead researcher was seemingly dragged to his death by an invisible entity that described itself as Dumma, an ancient figure from both Islamic and Jewish traditions. Although the story is completely unverifiable, encounters with this entity in the area have been referenced multiple times from different sources with residents even testifying to hearing his disembodied voice echoing his own name across the district late at night. Dumma, which in Hebrew means silence, is both an angel mentioned in Jewish and Islamic literature. He is the protector of nearby Egypt and the prince of hell. In the Jewish Kabbalah, it is even said that he had tens of thousands of angels of destruction under his command. While in some Islamic traditions, he is an entity who has authority over damned souls and has long been associated with this well in Yemen. This lore is consistent with the idea that the well can serve as a gateway to a pocket dimension called Barzakh, where the souls of both dead jinn and humans await judgment. Because it is connected to the world of the jinn, this gateway can either remain invisible to us or visually manifest in our reality, presumably by the will of Dumma. Because of this, the location has attracted witches and warlocks who have been known to perform magical ceremonies there, an act which is illegal under Islamic law. This idea that the well could either be an interdimensional access point to Barzakh 
or a gateway to hell itself, has gained popularity due to a foul smell that is sometimes emitted from it. And the foul tasting water that can be found in smaller wells across the Hadramut and Al Mahara governorates. The water is so foul that it was even mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad as something that should be avoided. In our first episode about the Barhut anomaly, we theorized that the entire plateau could be sitting on top of a supervolcano, hence, why the water is so bitter in some areas. This volcano has also been connected to a prophecy that speaks of a great fire originating from Yemen that will impact the entire world. In 1894, the geologist Thiero Bint, who after exploring the neighboring areas across Yemen, described parts of the region as sulfuric area and a source of brimstone. There are even independent reports conducted by Yemeni scientists going back decades that states that an active volcano in eastern Hadramaut known as Bir Barhut had erupted in the 10th century and was reported to be still smoking in 1813. More recently in 2007, several volcanoes pushed near a volcanic eruption in Jebel al Tair Island, an eruption that saw a chunk of the Everest Rift located there sink into the sea. Concerning the well itself, in 2013, according to Al Bayan newspaper, one of the Gulf's leading publications, an attempt was made by a company called Desert Line to record a visual survey of the anomaly. They attached one of their employees to a crane and lowered him into the well, equipped with video cameras to chronicle the descent. However, at only a hundred meters down, the employee screamed to be lifted back to the surface quickly, where he told his colleagues that the geometry of the well had began to shift unnaturally, closing in on him. Although this can be dismissed as a case of claustrophobia, when his team reviewed the footage he had been recording, they were shocked to see that from the moment he entered into the well, the cameras only recorded a black void, despite there being enough light. Equipment malfunction is a common anomalous occurrence associated with this location. In 2019, the local Yemeni YouTube channel Hadramut Al Khair attempted to send a drone down to explore the anomaly remotely. However, despite the mint condition of their device and the skill of the pilot, the drone refused to go into the hole as if an invisible force was preventing its descent. It was only in September 2021 where he finally had a successful mission to the bottom of the pit by the neighboring Omanis. Speaking to the media, Mohammed Al Kindi, a geology professor at the German University of Technology in Oman, stated that the goal of the expedition was to make the first documented study of the sinkhole and provide a scientific explanation for the foul smelling air rising from the depths of the well. Upon descending into the hole, the explorers reported finding waterfalls, seeing snakes, frogs, and beetles inside the cave system, as well as several dead animals, mainly birds, that appear to have fallen inside the pit. So does the findings of the team invalidate thousands of years of supernatural lore? Maybe to some extent. Fortunately, None of the Omanis lost their lives during the expedition, and there were no reported encounters with any strange animals or Lovecraftian type entities. It could be that the entire mystery of the well is the result of hundreds of years stories evolving into what we have today. But given that even in modern times, there have still been odd occurrences that are yet to be fully explained, such as malfunctioning equipment unsolved disappearances and even strange animal sightings. It should be noted that the exploration team did not report to the media the discovery of any human corpses or bones within the well, although the remains of other animals were found. So the idea that some of the disappearances over the years could simply have been careless humans falling to their deaths becomes slightly questionable. 
furthermore giving the alleged supernatural purpose of the well, acting as a gateway to a world of spirits, should we have honestly expected to openly see into another dimension once a successful mission had been completed. Being an interdimensional gateway, it would make sense that that gateway may not always be visible to the human eye. But what do you think? Over the next few episodes, we will examine anomalous locations further north in Saudi Arabia and Iraq and question how much do we really know about their history and the strange events they are tied to in the modern world. My name is Kayvon, please like and subscribe and also check out my personal channel in the description box below. See you in the next one.